Hello everybody, welcome to part two of our October art haul. And today is a very exciting day where we swatch everything. So I'm very excited. I'm going to start, I think, with my Liquitex inks because I only have two. This one I'm not gonna swatch because it's white and we swatched it already. So we don't need to swatch it again. You can imagine what it looks like. It looks like white. So you won't even see it on the paper, but I'm gonna swatch this one. So this is the Liquitex acrylic ink in red oxide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shake it and just put it directly on the paper. And spread it like this. So pretty. Let's try to create a gradient. This color is really amazing. And you can really see how it flows well too, which is something I thought was lacking in the Amsterdam inks. That's it. I'm going to make sure to write all the names of the colors when we're finished so I can show you a good close-ups and you can decide for yourself if it's a color that you're interested in or not. So you have all the names if you wanna, if you're interested. Now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna swatch the Sennelier oil pastels. I think I'm gonna write the names first. I'm gonna try to create somewhat of an order. Go brown's gonna be first. Then maybe we can do Chinese orange. Then gray green. Then earth brown. Then olive brown. And then we can finish up with sepia. So let's watch gold brown first. This color is very pretty. And I love how it spreads. It's so nice, so creamy. Okay, Chinese orange, <gasps> beautiful. Oh, it's very pretty. Yeah, this is a color that I needed. Now let's do gray green. Oh, this is such a beautiful color. I'm thinking it's more of a green than a gray, but I can definitely see what it's called, what it's called. Beautiful. Now let's do earth brown. Yeah, amazing. Olive brown. So beautiful. So I'm very glad that I got all of these colors because they're way more my style. And sepia, that one is broken, but we can still, we can still use it. Sepia, this one I thought would be a bit more cool because usually sepias are like a dark yellowish brown. This one is more like a gray, I would say, like a paint's gray. But either way, I really like it. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the acrylic paints. I am going to use this brush that we recently got to swatch them. And I can't wait to see what texture they have. So I'm going to write the names of the paints after. I'm just going to follow the order in which they come in the set. So first, we have titanium white, which I expected to be a regular white, nothing crazy. 
I like the consistency. Of course, this is a white, so we can't really tell right now how thick or how, well, how opaque, I mean, they are, but I really like the consistency. I can tell that they are not really thick. Now we're gonna do lemon yellow. A bright yellow, that's pretty. Now orange. They're all sealed, so I need to pierce the seal and it's nice because it's gonna leave like a dot of color on the cap. So I have an idea of what this paint looks like exactly, even if there's like color on the tube, sometimes it's not exactly how it is. So this paint is very opaque. At least this orange is. I think this yellow was a bit less opaque because there was a bit too much water on my brush. Burn Sienna now. It's pretty. It's less of... It's less orangey or less fiery than I would have expected. But I guess I'm used to Crinacridone Sienna, which is very fiery. Now we're gonna do orange red, which on the tube does not look like it's going to have some red in it, but we'll see. It looks... Ah, uh, well, I would say it's orange. It's, it looks like a mix of yellow ochre and orange, I would say. Now we're gonna try medium yellow which will be, I'm guessing, our warm yellow. This one was the cold one and this is the warm one. Yeah. Very pretty. We're gonna start another row with the reds. So we have a vermilion right here. Which usually is a color that I really like. It's a warm red and I like my warm colors a lot. I didn't leave too much space on top to write the name. Maybe I'm going to write it on the side. Now we're going to do rose red, which I guess is our cool red. Yeah, it's, it's pink. So we can use that as a cool red. But we have more reds. We have a scarlet, which is also supposed to be warm. And I really like that color too. Oh, a lot of it came out. Uh, I would say it's cooler though than uh, vermilion. It's gonna be interesting to see compared to the next one that we have, which is crimson red. On the tube, it looks like it's going to be a bit cooler if we just look at the color, but we'll see on paper. So this is crimson. Yeah, this is cool, definitely. It's always hard to say for me for the reds, but when I see them next to one another, then I can really tell which ones are warm and which ones are cool. So these two are a bit more warm and these two are cooler. Now, raw sienna gonna be interesting which is a color that I don't have in acrylics at all well most of these I don't have them so it's that's why I got this set even if it's not like the best quality you can see it's a bit transparent like most of these colors are a bit transparent but that's okay that means that I can play with opacity and layers that's fine and now burnt umber now let's go to another row. We are going to swatch gray, which I am guessing is a color I won't like too much. I rarely use grays. Yeah, it's just like, I find that grays are underwhelming. I can mix my own. I like that better. Next one is Van Dyke Brown, which usually is a color that I really like. It's a color that I'm, I have in uh, 
watercolors. I don't have it in acrylics. Yes, I like it. It's like a warm reddish brown. You can really guess what colors I'm gonna like because if they're warm, then there's a good chance I'm gonna like them. Now we have cobalt blue. This is a color that I recently discovered in watercolors and I've been using it a lot. So maybe I'm gonna like it as much in acrylics. Let's, let me put a bit more. You see, you can kind of build the opacity. So these are not very opaque as they are, but I'm guessing when they're dry, you can add another layer and then you won't see through them. Is that what you want in acrylics? I don't know, but this is what we have. So we're going to make the most of it. So this is cerulean blue. Oh my God. Sorry about the light. This is beautiful. And emerald green. I think this is a color that I'm gonna like a lot. If I just look at the color on the tube. Yeah, I like these greens. And what I like too is that you can tone them down really easily and they, you get this beautiful like olive. So I like this green because it's very versatile. And last one for this row is sap green, which is a classic. I'm excited to see what it looks like in the form of acrylics. It's pretty and it's going to be very pretty too when I tone it down. Now we have one more row to go. And we're going to start with deep green. And this is not a green that I like that much as it is, but I'm sure toned down, it's going to be great. Another color I'm excited to try is this one is Viridian, which I think is going to be cool, but yeah, I really see like the mixing potential. Now let's try deep blue. I find that the orders of these colors in the set are a bit weird. But that's okay. Now, ultramarine, which is also a classic color. Very pretty. This is one of the colors that I thought of maybe buying in watercolors because I'm planning on doing a travel palette. And I thought maybe I could buy this one as a warm blue, but I decided I'm gonna use Identron Blue instead of ultramarine. We'll see, we'll see if it works well or not. Now we have two more colors. This one is mauve. I'm guessing I won't like this color too much because I don't really like purples. Yeah. And it's very transparent too. On to our last one, it's lamp black. I don't own any lamp blacks in any of my materials in any of my mediums so yeah it's like a black black <laughs> okay so we're gonna wait for these to dry and we're gonna write the names down okay now for the most exciting part zoom you in Okay, so I wrote the names of the colors I'm going to swatch. I have seven. I have one more that is down there that I'm going to... I'm going to move the sketchbook when we're there. So let's start with Azo Yellow. Looks like such a pretty color. I'm trying to do like a pebble swatch like Natasha Newton. Very pretty. Now we have Hansa Yellow Medium. 
I'm hoping that it's going to be a lot warmer. So we have our warm and cool yellows. Yeah, that's warmer. Very pretty. I think it's going to be a great warm yellow. And then we're going to swatch green gold. And I have to admit that I cheated a little bit because I've used it already in my latest painting with the, like the urban landscape, the cityscape with the big trees. I used a bit of this green gold to create the leaves and I love it so much. I'm so glad I got it. At first I wasn't sure I would get it because it wasn't part of the colors I needed to create my palette, but man, it's so pretty. So vibrant. Now let's try Phthalo Blue Green Shade. This is a color that I'm so excited to try. I don't think I have any... I don't think I have colors like this at all. Maybe in my Van Gogh watercolors, but as I said in my other video, the reason I got this one is that I want to create a travel watercolor palette and I want it to be like professional quality. So. Van Gogh is like a student quality. Very pretty. Now another exciting color is Lunar Earth. I don't think I've seen it in videos. The binder is separating from the pigment, so I need to mix it a little bit before I use it. Okay, I was saying that I don't think this is a color that I've seen in videos before. So I have to say, I don't know what to expect. I think I just saw it maybe on Dr. Otto Cano's website. And I thought it was super pretty. I thought like it's very granulating. So I thought it would be a great color to add to my collection. It's so pretty. Yeah, I like it. And I know this is not the best paper to swatch watercolors on. And even then we can see how pretty it is. So imagine on a better quality paper. Now we're gonna swatch transparent red oxide, which is another color I'm very excited about. Oh my God, it's gonna be pretty. I know it, oh yeah. I love these kinds of fiery colors. It looks a little bit like my Quinacridone Sienna. So I'm going to have to compare the two. Maybe I have to choose one or the other to put in my palette if they're too similar. But oh my god, I love these colors. Okay, this, <laughs> this pebble is getting bigger and bigger. Wow. Amazing. Now we're going to do the last one, which is raw umber. All these earth tones are so beautiful. And raw umber is a color I don't have, I think. So at mass tone, it's very pretty.
I love it. Ah, yeah. So that's it. These are all of the new colors, the new art supplies that I got in this latest art haul. I hope that you enjoyed this swatching session. I don't think it was too long, so I think we did good. And I hope that you maybe, well, I don't want to tempt you into buying anything, but if you were looking for something specific and this video helped you choose, then I'm super happy about it. But either way, I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please leave a like, please leave a comment if you think that I should get something different or if you have any suggestions or any thoughts on any of these materials, please leave it down below. I love reading you and I take notes. Yeah, also subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel. I would love to have you back. In the meantime, I hope you take good care of you and I will see you soon. Bye.